Carl, we're live. Thank you. Uh, Sergeants, please start the backup recordings. PC recording started. Start recording started. Backup is rolling. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Hello and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please turn on their cameras and please set all electronic devices to vibrate. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, it's all yours. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the, to flag the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We will now go to roll call. Adams. Present. Every Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Blessed and present, sorry. Thank you. Borelli. Brannon. Present. Brooks Powers. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cornegie. Present. Deutsch. Dharma Diaz. Present. Ruben Diaz. Present. Dinowitz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. Present. Felice. Present. Gennaro. Gennaro. Present. Present. Gibson. Good afternoon. Blessed and present. Jonai. Grudenchik. I am absolutely here. Thank you. Holden. Here. Kalos. Moving further and further down the alphabet and here. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Present. Kozlowitz. Present. Lander. Present. Levin. Present. Levine. Present. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Here. Benchaka. Present. Miller. Madame Mubarak. Here. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Riley. Good afternoon, colleagues. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. 
Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. All right, thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Brother Benyaya Abdelghani, spiritual leader of Muslim Center of New York Incorporated, located at 137-58 Geranium Avenue in Flushing, Queens. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> in the name of God, the most merciful, the most kind, praise to God, Lord of the universe, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment, you alone we worship, you alone we ask for help, guide us in the right path, the path of those that you blessed, not those who earn your anger. The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed, a guidance and proof for guidance. And when my servant asks you concerning me and about me, indeed, I am very near to them. Respond to their invocation and supplication. And when he calls upon me, so let them respond to me by obedience and faith. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing your spiritual energy with us today. I would now like to ask Council Member Peter Ku to spread the invocation onto the record. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Brother Benyaya. Brother Benyaya graduated with a dual bachelor's degree in Arabic language, literature, and Islamic studies from Hassan II University in Morocco. He achieved his master's degree in Arabic language literature. Brother Benyaya comes to us from the Muslim Center of New York in my district in Flushing, where he has served as director and Iman since 2009. As many of you know, my district is well known as the home of the Flushing Remonstrance, which is largely thought of as the dark document that first enshrined freedom of religion in America. Our religious diversity is apparent on every block, and nowhere is this more evidence than by the Muslim Center's long history with us. Since 1975, the Muslim Center of New York has called Flushing a home. Here, it has offered classes on the Quran for youth, Islamic classes, seminars in awareness, and marriage services. It is in large part due to the efforts of Brother Benyaya that we have such a thriving, healthy, and active Muslim community in Flushing. And I'm very grateful to be able to welcome him to the city council today during this Ramadan. With that, I would like to make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, council member Peter Ku. And we appreciate you sharing your gifts with us today in the city council stated meeting. We will now at this time, we will move to the adoption of minutes by council member Paul Vallone. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I now make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of the April 22nd, 2021 be adopted as printed. Uh, point of order, council member Vallone. Yes. I believe today is April 22nd, 2021. Um, <laughs> it might have been the March 18th, 2021. It very well could be the March 18th. I was ready for today's motion. <laughs> so let's, So then I will make that motion for the minutes of the stated meeting of March 18th, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much, Council Member Vallone. Uh, we appreciate your forward thinking. We will now move to messages and papers from the mayor. None. 
communications from city, county, and borough offices. M296, certification of election of Eric Dinowitz, new council member, 11th district. Congratulations, received, ordered, printed, and filed. M297, the certification of election of Oswald Felice, new council member, 15th district. Congratulations again, received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. M298, resignation of council member Costa G. Constantinidis, 22nd district. Talk about Costa in a few minutes. Uh, received, ordered, printed, and filed. Land use call ups. M299, Acme Smoked Fish Gem Street rezoning. Uh, thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask the clerk to take a roll call vote on today's land use call up. Again, we're just voting on this single land use call up as we do this roll call vote. So I'll ask the clerk to take the roll. Thank you, Adams. Congratulations and welcome new colleagues, Dinowitz and Felice. I vote aye. I'm Bree Samuel. Congratulations and I vote aye. Ayala. I would like to welcome our newest members to the Bronx delegation and with that I vote aye. Barron. Uh, you're muted, Councilor Barron. Yes, thank you, I vote aye and welcome to our new colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. I vote aye, and of course, welcome to our new colleagues. Brennan. Welcome and congratulations to council members Dinowitz and Felice, and I vote aye. Thank you. Brooks Powers. Welcome to my newest colleagues. I'm not the young kid on the block anymore, um, and I vote aye. Cabrera. Congratulations to Anita's colleagues from the BX. Welcome, Aina Vorai. Thank you, Chin. Yes, I also want to welcome uh, our new colleagues. Congratulations, Aina I. Carnegie. Welcome to our new colleagues from the uh, village of Brooklyn, uh, Aina Vorai. Dharma Diaz. Welcome, bienvenidos, my new colleagues. Uh, I vote aye. Ruben Diaz. Harvey Clark. Council member Ruben Diaz. I vote aye. Thank you. Dinowitz. Oh, thank you to the for the warm welcomes from my new colleagues, and I I vote aye. Thank you, Drum. I want to welcome our new educator colleague, Councilmember Dinowitz, and of course also our other colleagues as well. I vote aye. Eugene, I would like to uh, to congratulate uh, Councilmember Dinowitz, Councilmember Felix, and all our new colleagues. And with this, I vote aye. Thank you. Felice. Thank you so much for the welcome. I vote aye as well. Thank you, Gennaro. Thank you, Gennaro. I welcome our new colleagues and I vote yes. Colleagues and I vote yes. Gibson. Thank you. Congratulations and warmest regards and welcome to our colleagues. Um, from the Bronx delegation, Council Member Dinowitz, Council Member Felice. We look forward to working with you. I vote aye. Joan I. Congratulations and welcome, colleagues. Um, this is your first vote. I'm excited for you. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> with that, I vote aye. <laughs> Grodenchik. I'm not going to comment on uh, Councilman Joan I's comments, but I do want to welcome. Uh, Councilmember Dinowitz, who I had the pleasure of serving with his father in the State Assembly, welcome. And Councilmember Felice, you represent the Holy Land in the Bronx where my father was born. So um, he was born on Belmont Avenue and I'm, I'm so happy to see both of you here. With that, I vote aye. Holden. Welcome new members and I vote aye. 
Kalos. Welcome to new members, especially those who went to the Bronx High School of Science, and I vote aye. <coughs> cool. Welcome, Council Member Phillips and Council Member Dinovich. Dinovich, uh, I vote aye. Kozlowitz. As a former Bronxite for 20 years, I, I want to welcome our new council members and I vote aye. Lander. Congrats and welcome new colleagues. It's great to have you join us. I vote aye. Levin. Congratulations to our new colleagues. I vote aye. Levine. Welcome council members Denowitz and Felis. I will be voting aye. Lewis. A warm welcome to our new colleagues, and I vote aye on all. Maisel. Uh, yes. Menchaca. Bienvenidos, colegas. I vote aye. Miller. Welcome, colleagues. I vote aye. Moya. Welcome to our new colleagues, and uh, I'm voting aye. Perkins. Gotcha. Council Member Perkins, plan use call ups? I will. Thank you, sir. Powers. Welcome, my friends, uh, Council Member Dinowitz and Council Member Feliz, and I will be voting aye. Thank you. Riley. I would like to give a warm welcome to Council Member Dinowitz and Council Member Feliz. You have expanded and strengthened the Bronx delegation once again, and I vote aye. Rivera. Welcome, I vote aye. Rodriguez. Hey, congratulations to my colleague, now working with us, uh, Dino Wench uh, from Riverdale. I spent a lot of time in his district passing by and, and Council Member Felis, it was a sweet victory. So congratulations. And with that, I vote right. Rose. Welcome and salutations from Shaolin and I vote aye. Rosenthal. Congratulations to our new colleagues, welcome. And I vote aye. Thank you. Salamanca. I vote aye. Traeger. Congratulations and welcome to our new colleagues. And uh, the Educator Caucus is growing with Councilmember Eric Dinowitz. Congratulations as well. Thank you. I vote aye. Thank you. Ulrich. Welcome to my new colleagues, and I vote aye. Valone. I vote aye and welcome to council members Feliz and Danowitz. And you are already ahead of the game because you should have seen the council try to say council member Grudenchik's last name at his first meeting. It didn't go over so well. So you guys do great. I vote aye. Van Bramer. Congrats to all. I vote aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. I vote aye, and I also congratulate and welcome our new colleagues to the city council, council member Dinowitz, as well as council member Felice. Just when I thought Brooklyn was really gaining on the Bronx, here you all come, but we're happy to welcome you and we're happy to work with you. And please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Reynoso, if I missed you. Okay. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call up has a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Today's land use call up is adopted. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Good afternoon. Happy Earth Day. Today is a reminder of how we must all work together to protect our communities from environmental hazards. And not just uh, about, it's not just about creating a cleaner, greener city, it's about environmental justice. And that means banning the use of chemical pesticides, 
on public property, which is one of the bills we're voting on today. These chemical pesticides are harmful to our children, our seniors, and everyone who plays in our parks and lives in public housing. Our legislative package today also include, also calls for reducing food waste, increasing opportunities for sports and recreation for youth, and keeping our boardwalk safe, among other bills. I'm proud that the council's fighting to make our city a safer, healthier, and more livable city for all New Yorkers. Before I delve into our agenda, I want to provide an update, of course, on the battle against COVID-19 here in New York City. Uh, in our city, as of yesterday, 32,200 New Yorkers, 32,200 New Yorkers have died from the coronavirus. While we, while we continue to reopen our city slowly, it's important to remember that the virus is not over. We want people to get vaccinated, to wear a mask, and to stay home if you're sick. I'm really, really, really sad to report that uh, we are all mourning the loss of two members of our council family. As many of you know, Lori Constantinides, the wife of our former colleague, Costa Constantinides, died on Monday. It was an unexpected loss, even though she had faced a long illness. She was only 47 years old. It was obvious to all of us, it is obvious to all of us, how deeply in love Costa was with Lori. He always spoke about her with admiration and with great affection, and my heart breaks for Costa and their 11-year-old son, Nico. On behalf of the council, we are sending them our deep thoughts and prayers as they mourn this tremendous loss. And I think all of you know that there is services tonight, uh, this evening. So if we could try to get through the stated meeting uh, today, I know many, many colleagues reached out and said they wanna go at the beginning of this uh, to be here for Costa. Um, I'm so devastated uh, for him and I, I've spoken to him the last few days and it's been really, really hard for him and his son. So I hope any of you that can go to those services today to be there for him, we'll, we'll, we'll do your best to make it. Costa and his son need us right now. So um, we're thinking of him. I also am really, again, devastated to report that someone that I loved so much, Christy McLaughlin, who served the council for 17 years before recently re retiring, died in late March. As director of events and production services at CED and the council, Christine perfectly managed more than 30 events each year. She was a remarkable, remarkable person. She was a constituent of mine, lived not that far from me, and a dear friend to many of us. I'm so sad uh, that Christine is gone. So on behalf of myself and of course the council, I want to extend our deepest condolences to her family, friends, and former colleagues, two really painful losses that we've experienced recently. I'd also like to acknowledge those in our city who died while on the job. <clears throat> Angel Aguiar Duran, a sanitation worker for Cogent Waste Solutions, died after being struck by a minivan on April 11th in Brooklyn. He was 52 years old. And as I do at every stated meeting, I want to remember the lives of those who recently lost to 9-11 related illnesses. They include retired firefighter Joseph Daly, he was 70, retired police officer Andy Stromfeld, retired firefighter James David Shaughnessy, he was 76, retired fire lieutenant James Winters, he was 83, retired NYPD detective Michael Dye, he was 56, retired NYPD sergeant Thomas Byrne, he was 51, retired NYPD detective Linda Eaton Lewis, and NYPD officer Vincent Ritchie, he was 42. If we could take a moment of silence for Lori, Christine, Angel, all who have died from 9-11 related illnesses and all of those we've lost to COVID-19. Thank you. Today, I also wanna welcome, and many colleagues have already welcomed, I will welcome uh, two new members to the council, both from the Bronx. Eric Dinowitz won the seat for Council District 11, which includes Riverdale, Bedford Park, Kingsbridge, Norwood, Van Cortland Village, Wakefield, and Woodlawn, and more neighborhoods that I didn't name, and Oswald Feliz, 
won the seat for Council District 15, which includes Fordham, Bedford Park, West Farms, Bathgate, East Tremont, Van Ness, Belmont, Allerton, Allenville, and Mount Hope. So I want to welcome you, Council Member Dinowitz. Welcome to you, Council Member Felice. Congratulations. If we could have a big virtual round of applause for our two new colleagues, welcoming them to the New York City Council. We look forward to working uh, with all of you. Congratulations to you and your families. Before we move on to our agenda today, I'd like to acknowledge a significant point in time in our nation that occurred this week. Former police officer Derek Chauvin, Minneapolis, was found guilty on all counts of murder of the murder of George Floyd, an innocent black man who was murdered in cold blood. Unfortunately, a person of color dying in police custody is not that unusual, but this week something unusual did happen. A jury saw the injustice and actually delivered a guilty verdict. Nothing will ever bring George Floyd back to his family. He should still be alive right now. Nothing will ever alleviate their pain and suffering. And true justice would be if George Floyd was never killed in the first place. But it is a significant verdict. And I hope that it brings some measure of comfort to George Floyd's family, his loved ones, and those who bore witness to his death, including 17-year-old, then 17-year-old Donella Frazier, the teenager who changed history by filming this brutal encounter. So rest in peace, George Floyd. Rest in peace. I want to acknowledge a historic moment for this council. I'm proud that the council today is voting on a rules change that constitutes the next step in the process to recognize a union for council aides. This comes at the urging of more than 30 council members who signed a letter calling for voluntary recognition. The resolution specifies that collective bargaining matters, including recognition, are within the jurisdiction of the speaker. This council proudly supports labor and union efforts of our vital staff. Uh, the Land Use Committee will be voting on the following item. 737 4th Avenue rezoning will facilitate the development of a new 14-story mixed-use building with approximately 142 units of housing, of which 35 will be permanently affordable in ground floor commercial space in Council Member Carlos Menchaca's district. The Council will vote on two Article 11 property tax exemptions out of the Finance Committee. One of them is in Majority Leader Cumbo's district, and the other is in Council Member Moya's district. Moving into our legislative agenda, the council will be voting on a resolution by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and Councilmember Margaret Chin calling on the Congress to pass and the president to sign the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act of 2021. Our first two bills come out of the Committee on Parks and Recreation. Introduction number 1888A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, will prohibit all non-city-owned or non-authorized motor vehicles from being used on city elevated boardwalks. The bill will also require that authorized city employees or contractors only use small utility, utility vehicles under 2,400 pounds for activities on wooden boardwalks unless larger vehicles are necessary for construction, maintenance, or public safety needs. I wanna thank from the staff, Christopher Sartori and Patrick Mulvihill. Also out of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, we're voting on a bill to establish the Office of Sports, Wellness, and Recreation. Introduction number 1959A, sponsored by Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez, in conjunction with the Brooklyn Borough President, will require the mayor to establish an Office of Sports, Wellness, and Recreation. This office will have the authority to promote and enhance sports-related opportunities for youth and to promote the role of sports and education. And from the staff, I want to thank Christopher Sartori and Patrick Mulvihill. The council's committed to tackling food insecurity and reducing food waste. I'm proud of the work we've done on food policy and very happy we're doing more today on this important issue. We're voting on two bills from our economic development committee to reduce food waste and provide us with more information on food insecurity in our city. First introduction number 1680A, sponsored by council member Paul Vallone, will require the mayor's office of food policy to include the following additional information in the food metrics report. The number of individuals eligible for the Supplementary Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, who are not currently enrolled in the program, disaggregated by borough and age, information about retailers that are authorized to accept and redeem SNAP benefits, information about food insecurity in each borough, 
trends in dietary consumption and long-term diet related health outcomes across socioeconomic and racial groups were practicable. Additional sources of information selected by DOHMH and we will require the Mayor's Office of Food Policy to express all data in the food metrics report in absolute numbers and as a percentage of the relevant population. And from the staff, I wanna thank Andrea Vasquez and Nadia Johnson. The second bill, introduction number 1673A, sponsored by Council Member Carlina Rivera, requires city agencies that procure food to develop food waste prevention plans as well as make recommendations on how to safely and efficiently donate surplus food. The legislation requires agencies with food waste prevention plans to submit such plans to the sanitation commissioner for approval and the plan then must be submitted to the council speaker. And I wanna thank Andrea Vasquez and Nadia Johnson again. Also regarding food govern governance from our committee on education, we have introduction number 1675A sponsored by council member Debbie Rose. This bill will expand on local law four of 2018 by requiring the Department of Education to provide information to every student regarding summer meals and provide them with three locations for summer meals closest to their homes. And from the staff, I wanna thank Andrea Vasquez and Malcolm Butehorn. Finally, we have two, pill, two bills out of the Committee on Health, introduction number 1748A, sponsored by council member Danny Drum, will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to conduct a public information and outreach campaign regarding the provision of medically unnecessary treatments and interventions performed on individuals born with intersex traits or variations in sex characteristics. As part of this campaign, the Department of Health of Mental Hygiene will create and distribute educational materials and resources for parents and guardians of individuals born with intersex traits or variations in sex characteristics create resources for medical practitioners and identify community outreach partners and stakeholders. The department would consult with individuals and organizations with expertise in intersex traits or variations in sex characteristics, including individuals who are intersex or have variation in sex characteristics in the development of such public information and outreach campaign. From the staff, I wanna thank Harbani Ahuja, Sarah Liss, M. Balkin and Sarah Ginsburg. And finally, today, Earth Day, the council will vote on a bill aimed at protecting all New Yorkers, but particularly our children. We're voting to ban the use of any non-biological pesticide, such as glyphosate, on any playground, park, and any other property under the jurisdiction of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, uh, sorry, the Department of Parks and Recreation, this is a bill from council member Ben Kalos. It's important that as technology changes and evolves, New York City government keeps up. We no longer burn coal in our buildings. We don't light our offices with gas lamps and we shouldn't be using toxic and dangerous chemicals in our public spaces. Our NYCHA residents deserve better. Families enjoying a day in the park deserve better. New Yorkers deserve better. And I'm proud that we're voting on this bill to modernize our pest control and keep New Yorkers safe. This legislation would expand the list of prohibited pesticides to also include pesticides classified as a human carcinogen by the Office of Pesticide Programs of the United States Environmental Protection Agency, pesticides classified by the California Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment as a developmental toxin, and pesticides containing active ingredients listed as uh, carcinogenic by the International Agency for Research on Cancer of the World Health Organization. And I wanna thank Sarah Liss from the staff and I wanna congratulate Ben on this important bill. With that, I turn it back over to you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, you're on mute, Madam Majority Leader. Okay, thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. As a reminder, this section is only for items that we'll be voting on for general orders today. Later on in today's stated meeting, there will be an opportunity to speak about resolutions. But for this particular portion of the meeting, we're just going to be discussing the items that we will be voting on currently. We will now recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. 
Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Kalos, Council Member Rodriguez, and Council Member Gennaro. Okay, we will begin. Council Member Kalos, you may begin following the countdown clock. Clock is ready. Today is Earth Day, and Earth Day is the day we will ban toxic pesticides from our parks. We will stop poisoning our children, stop poisoning our workers, we'll stop poisoning Mother Earth. We'll stop choosing cancer over weeds. I will take weeds any day over cancer. Now this is personal for me and countless families like mine who went through this pandemic in a cramped one bedroom apartment that weren't designed for shelter in place, who relied on parks as a refuge. As a new dad with a baby, now a toddler, the parks are scary. Young children crawl on the ground, they touch everything, then they inevitably put everything in their mouths and ingest toxic pesticides. The Black Institute found that pesticides are an issue of environmental justice as they found pesticides like Roundup were being sprayed more frequently in black and brown communities than in white communities. Introduction 1524 will prohibit chemically based pesticides from being used on any property owned or leased by the city, with very limited exceptions. This legislation puts New York City at the forefront nationally of addressing this important issue. Thank you to Council Member James Gennaro for starting the fight in 2005 with Local Law 37. The kindergarten at PS 290, Paul Raghavan, their teacher, Bertha Lewis at the Black Institute, Jay Feldman from Beyond Testified, Beyond Pesticides, Doug and Patty Wood of Grassroots Environmental Education, who many of you heard from, and lastly, Speaker Corey Johnson for hearing the bill last term, for approaching me to pass this bill on or before Earth Day, for being true to his word, for being a great champion for our children, our parks workers, and our planet. I yield my time. Thank you so much. We'll now go to Council Member Rodriguez. Clock Thank, is you, ready. Majority, thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I'm in the car, but I'm not driving. I'm coming back from Brooklyn, standing with the Brooklyn Board President, Eric Adams, as he was holding a press conference on gun, gun, gun violence. Uh, uh, the bill that uh, we will be voting today to create the sport uh, department, uh, office in New York City who had not been possible without the support of the chief of staff of the, of the council, Jason Goldman, Jeff Baker, beside the other members of the team that the speaker already recognized, as well as my office staff, chief of staff, Elizabeth Conforme, and lady and project director, Evelyn Collado, and my communication director, Tomas Garita. I would also like to thank Speaker Corey Johnson with your leadership to work on this legislation as also we are having conversation on the municipal voting rights, knowing that there's sometimes complicated bill that take time by your commitment to work around important legislation that is it that we are committed to work on it, show your leadership. I also like to thank Brooklyn Board President Eric Adams for working on this bill and in Singa Presco. And I gotta got thank my own daughter, Yarisa Rodriguez, who been in doing competitive swimming for the last five years, who has a lot of concern on how we can close the gap about a black, Latino, Asian, underserved children to have a path to do competitive sports. A public advocate, Jomani Williams, Manhattan Borough President, Gabe Brewer, and all the colleagues who are voting today with this bill. What is the goal of this office? This office will be responsible to put a strategy, initiative, to bring together the public sector, the academic institution, and the private institution, the Barclays Center, the Madison Square Garden, the Yankee Stadium, the Midfield, everyone, City Field, everyone should come on board. I want to give a special thanks to all the stakeholders, from Astro Green to the Armour in Brooklyn, the one also in Washington High, uh, for Washington. It, it, I cannot, you know, it, it left anyone out, but to say thank you to everyone that worked with this bill. This is a reality that we face in the city of New York. There's not a path that we have in place up to now uh, to create equal opportunity to working class children to do competitive sports. Hoping that working with you guys, we also can come out and put some funding to support this initiative. Hoy le doy la gracia al vocero del Consejo, Corey Johnson, al presidente del, 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 del condado de Brooklyn, 
eh, Eric Adams, a, to, a Giovanni Williams, a todo lo que han hecho posible crear un departamento de deporte en la ciudad de Nueva York que será responsable de hacer estrategia e iniciativa para que los niños de familia de casos recursos también tengan las mismas oportunidades de hacer también deporte competitivo en esta ciudad. Thank you, Councilmember Rodriguez. We will now move to Councilmember Gennaro. Time begins. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to uh, thank uh, Councilmember Kalos in a special way for the real, you know, hard work he did on the pesticide bill. Uh, as he mentioned, we did this in 2005. Uh, you know, these bills get old pretty quickly, these technical bills, and we came back again and um, made amendments to it in 2007. The world has changed a lot since 2007, uh, and this, this issue needed a real champion to step forward and, you know, make a modern bill that would take into account uh, everything we know now that we didn't know back in 2005 and 2007. So I thank um, Councilman Michaelis in a special way. Um, I thank the chair of the committee, Levine, and uh, of course, Speaker Johnson, the you know, 35 co-sponsors of the bill, um, including myself. And uh, uh, thank you, Councilman Michaelis and uh, Speaker Johnson and Mark Levine for this really nice birthday present. I really appreciate it. And with, uh, yes, so that's, this concludes my comments. Thank you so much. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Rose and Menchaca. Council member Rose, you may begin. Time begins. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to start by thanking council members Kalos and Gennaro for the very important pesticide legislation. Um, it's long overdue. I'm sorry that it takes so long to get these things done, but it is definitely important. Um, my colleagues today, I am thrilled to be voting on my bill, Intro 1675, which will inform more families that there is a secure place nearby that they can send their children to receive free meals during the summer months. This bill will require the Department of Education to mail summer meal information to every eligible student. This information would include the three nearest locations to their homes, the operating hours and eligibility uh, guidelines. Summer meals are offered to all children aged 18 and under at no cost at several sites across our city, including public schools, community pool centers, public parks, libraries, and NYCHA locations from June through August. Low-income parents often rely on New York City school food for free meals for their children throughout the school year. And this need doesn't simply disappear during the summer months. As the number of summer meal sites continue to increase, families should be properly notified about the free meal options that are available to them. And as we turn the corner of a pandemic that has threatened food security for thousands of New Yorkers, many of them children, this bill is especially important. It is my hope that this, the passage of this bill will let low income parents know that there, is, there are resources available to them that will ease the burden that they face during the summer months, which is finding food to feed their children while juggling the cost of out of school care and work schedules. I wanna thank Speaker Johnson for his leadership and his efforts to end food insecurity. Chair Traeger for his, for his support and, and uh, dedication to youth and to Michael Buterhorn and um, Andrea Vasquez for all the work that they did on this bill. Thank you and I hope you vote aye. Thank you so much, Council Member Rose. We'll now go to Council Member Menchaca. Talk is ready. Thank you, Majority Leader. I have been extremely critical of our land use process, which makes people believe that I am against development, but I am not, and nor are my neighbors in Sunset Park. What we have always demanded is for community control and deference in making land use decisions. That is a tall order since most projects are developer driven. And so I have rejected many proposals in the past. 
the 737 rezoning is different and we're gonna be voting on it today in the council. From the start, Community Board 7 took control. CB7 forced the developer to redo their proposal several, several times before considering it. Then CB7 held multiple public hearings and demanded binding conditions. The developer, Totem, agreed to a CBA, a community benefits agreement, that codified all the community board's conditions. And it executed a CBA before the council held its first public hearing. When I asked the developer to also present the CBA to our community in multiple languages, they did so. People learned about it and asked questions. What will happen now at 737 Fourth Avenue is incredible. A parking lot will now become a building with 33 permanently affordable units, a ground floor commercial space mostly reserved for local businesses, bike stations with a third reserved for deliveristas and a free easement to the MTA so it can build an ADA accessible elevator to the subway next door. Because CB7 led the process and a CBA is in place, I have decided to honor their work and support this rezoning. Democratic participation and decision making does not always mean you will agree with the outcome. I would have preferred 100% affordable, for example, but it is what we need right now to recover from the pandemic. I ask you, my colleagues, to, uh, to support this rezoning, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Councilmember Menchaca. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Councilmember Gradenchik. Councilmember Gradenchik, you may begin. Thank you, Majority Leader. And I, I just want to call my colleagues' attentions today um, to Resolution 1603, which came out of the Finance Committee this morning under the leadership of Chair Drum. Um, it is going to allocate approximately another $17 million for food pantry money. And I want to thank um, the Speaker especially, who ever since uh, his first press conference at Speaker has taken on um, the mantle of trying to do something for those people who do not have enough food to eat in the city of New York. And this is food for food pantries. Uh, we call it emergency food. Um, and I would think that anytime somebody doesn't have enough to eat, it's an emergency. And I wanna thank uh, Chair Drum, who uh, has been a champion for this as well. And of course, um, Chair Levin, who uh, chairs the General Welfare Committee, who has been uh, my partner in this crime, so to speak, to make sure that no New Yorkers go hungry. Um, it is, uh, there are other pieces of legislation today which will support this, especially uh, Council Member Rose and uh, Council Member Vallone has legislation today. We need to make sure that nobody goes hungry in this city. And I wanna thank all of you for all you have done uh, since my term in this council um, to make sure that that is indeed the case. So I urge a yes vote on that and I yield the balance of my time. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gredenchek. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. We will now go on to a report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. The report of the Committee on Economic Development, intro 1673A and 1680A, food waste prevention plans and reporting requirements. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, intro 1675B, summer meals. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 1603, Transparency Resolution. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1604 and 1605, Business Improvement Districts. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 755 and Reso 1612 and LU 756 and Reso 1613, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, Intro 1524A, Agency Pesticide Use. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1748A, Information on Medically Unnecessary Treatments. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, Intro 1888A, Prohibiting Vehicles on Boardwalks. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1959A, Creating an Office of Sports, Wellness, and Recreation. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, Preconsidered Reso 1608, Collective Bargaining. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1609, Council Committee Changes. Coupled on general orders. 
general orders calendar, LU 733 and Reso 1614 and LU 734 and Reso 1615, 737 4th Avenue rezoning. Couple of general orders and at this time I'm asking for the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Congratulations to all of my colleagues on passing such phenomenal legislation today, particularly all of the food insecurity legislation and Councilmember Kalos, the pesticide prohibition, which so many of us has been on with you. Congratulations. I say I on all. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. I vote I on all. Ayala. I vote I on all. Baron. Council Member Baron, you might be muted. We'll come back to Council Member Baron. Borelli. Thank you. I vote uh, no on 1748A, no on 1959A, uh, no on preconsidered 1608. Uh, yes on the rest, and thank you very much. Brennan. I vote aye on all. Brooks Powers. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cabrera. I on all. Chin. Congratulations to my colleagues on their important legislation, but I vote I on all. Carnegie. To my colleagues passing substantive legislation today, you truly never cease to amaze me. I vote I on all. Dharma Diaz. Council member Dharma Diaz. I, I was asking for permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. I speak to, to Rezo that's affecting Puerto Rico, the nice points, $9.6 billion asking for special attention to be placed on, on the grid. I want to take two seconds to share with you a personal story so you understand the relevance of, of the need of this grid in Puerto Rico. A dear friend of mine relocated to Puerto Rico to assist his mom who's, dear, who's suffering from dementia. My friend has had two, dear, two horrible infections and has been hospitalized for the lack of water and electricity that they're receiving to their household. Puerto Rico is not a third world country. Puerto Rico is a commonwealth uh, of the US and we deserve better uh, as a people to treat one another. So again, thank you for the opportunity to explain my role, I on oral. Thank you, Council Member Diaz. Ruben Diaz. Me and Todo. Dinowitz. Aye on all. Drum. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Thank you, sir. I vote aye. Thank you. Elise. I vote yes on all, and I also thank all of you for working on these important issues. Thank you. Gennaro. Yes. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. I am voting aye on all of today's agenda items. And I want to thank our speaker and all of my colleagues for important legislation, certainly recognizing our Earth Day and our efforts to continue to provide a sustainable and more livable city of New York and all of the investments we're making in our infrastructure to provide long-term sustainability for all New Yorkers. I'm grateful for this city council. 
I also want to speak in support of Resolution 1608, our rules change, recognizing our hard work and amazing legislative staff for all of the work they have done the past year. Uh, we appreciate your exceptional work, your commitment, and everything that you've done. Certainly my team, Team Gibson, uh, we have done just such amazing work on behalf of our district and our constituents. And I'm really grateful that we are going to allow this process to recognize all of their work through uh, forming a union and making sure that we consistently look at wage and standardizing all of our work and making sure that they continue to be recognized for the great work. So again, congratulations, colleagues. Happy um, Earth Day. And I want to send my love to our former colleague, Sacosta, and his family, and really thank all of you for great work today and great legislation. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Joan I. Majority Leader, uh, permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, my present thoughts are with Costa and his family on the loss of his wife and with Christine's family. I keep them in my thoughts and prayers. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Gorenchik. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Thank you to every sponsor on our pesticides legislation. I vote aye on all. Ku. I'm all I am all, and congratulations to uh, our council members who passed the legislation today. Kozlowitz. I am all. Lander. I uh, request permission to explain. Permission granted. Thank you. Like Councilmember Gibson, I want to really give props to the Association for Legislative Employees for their hard work to get to this day. And I, I think it's uh, wonderful that this council is adopting the rules change in Resolution 1608. So congratulations to them on their organizing and their courage. Um, I have not yet had time to review the transparency resolution in detail, so I'm going to abstain on Resolution 1603 and vote aye on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Levin. Um, uh, just wanna offer my condolences to uh, my good friend, Costa Constantinidis and his family um, and the family of Christine McLaughlin, who was always such a, a, a wonderful and warm person um, to me and to my staff. And uh, so my heart goes out to all of uh, her loved ones as well. And with that, I vote I on all. Levine. Thank you. And I too want to offer my deepest condolences to the family of Christine and also to my dear friend Costa. Uh, we're thinking of you. You're in our thoughts and prayers. And I'll be voting aye on all. Lewis. Voting aye on all and also wanted to extend my sincere condolences to Christine's family and to Costa. Myzel. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I want to extend my condolences to, to Costa and his family. Uh, also, Christine's family. Um, I was an LGBT liaison working for the speaker uh, a couple of sessions ago, or a few sessions ago. And uh, I just remember working with Christine on the 30th floor and I, I hold her in my heart uh, in the work that, that we did together. And working on that floor is not easy, uh, working in a city council and, and she just made it run. Uh, and so I will think of her uh, for a long time. Um, I wanna vote aye on all um, and also send a message to all the staff who will continue to organize in the council for union and just then you know that there's a lot of support and uh, I see you. Thank you. Miller.
Council Member Miller. We'll come back. Okay. Moya. I vote aye. Thank you. Perkins. Uh, I vote aye. Powers. So I send my deepest condolences to Council, Council Member Costa Constantinides' family and, of course, Christy McLaughlin's family as well. I know how tough these last few months have been for them. Um, and with that, I'll be voting aye. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Barron? Yes, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I want to extend my condolences uh, to our colleague, Costa Constantinides, for his loss he and his family. And regarding the legislation, I want to commend the ALE for the work that they're doing. I'm very supportive of those union efforts and look forward to their moving forward and do want to express to the speaker our support and our interest in having a collective body come together so that the issues that are of concern to us in terms of equity in our offices will be a part of what's on the negotiating table. And in terms of legislation, I vote aye on all, with the exception of 733 and 734 and the accompanying resolutions on which I am abstaining. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Thank you. Councilmember Miller. Uh, happy Earth Day, everyone, and Ramadan Mubarak. Condolences to uh, Councilmember Constantinides and his family. Uh, I will be voting aye on all with the exceptions of 1748. I'll be abstaining. Reynoso. I'd like to vote aye on all and condolences to Costa's family um, and Costa himself. And I would just, and to Christine's family, I remember uh, Christine treated me with love, both as a staffer and as a council member. And it meant, it meant the world to me. Um, so condolences to our family as well. Thank you. Riley. Uh, I would like to extend my sympathy uh, to Councilmember Constantinides for his loss, and I would like to vote aye on all. Thank you. Rivera. I vote aye. Rodriguez. I vote aye. Rose. Condolences to Christy McLaughlin's family and to Costa, I'm so sorry for his loss. And I vote aye on all. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry also that I forgot to uh, mention my solidarity to Costa. There's no word that we can express, you know, the pain that he's going through, a great colleague and, you know, no one can think about how tough this moment is for her and his family. So uh, my solidarity to him, my prayer, an answer that I didn't mention before. Thank you. Council member Rosenthal. Um, with condolences to, to Costa and deep love uh, to him and his family. Um, and, you know, we're passing a bill today that, that no one's talking about, but is an incredibly important piece of legislation. Congratulations, council member Drum for your legislation to start the process for people to, for doctors to recognize uh, babies born with intersex characteristics. Um, that is how we educate people as we start there. And I'm just so proud of you, um, proud to be a co-sponsor, but really proud of you for, for push, getting that bill through. Um, so I vote aye and all, and permission to explain my vote, I guess I just did. Okay, thank you. 
Salamanca. Um, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, first, I want to send my condolences to um, our council member, Casa Constantinides. Um, and second of all, I would like to welcome the two new Bronx members, uh, Oswald Feliz and Eric Dinowitz. Welcome to the council. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I also want to extend my heartfelt condolences and sympathies to our colleague Costa uh, for, for the loss in his family. Um, our, our prayers will, will be with him. And um, prayers to Christine's family. Uh, Christine helped my office and me when we planned our first ever uh, heritage celebration night for Russian speaking New Yorkers at City Hall. We were very nervous. This was our first big event and she was so accommodating, so helpful, helped us navigate the whole, the whole process and uh, we're forever grateful for her and uh, just sympathies and condolences to her family. Um, I also want to uh, congratulate, acknowledge the work of my colleagues and all their great pieces of, of bills they're passing today. Councilman Rose, thank you for your leadership and work for our kids and families, always appreciate you. Um, and also thank you for your support on reaffirming that we have a Coney Island boardwalk and not the Belt Parkway. This is the, this is the people's playground, it's not the people's highway. And we should not be having cars, think about it, cars, vehicles on a boardwalk. Uh, it is in a, a, an iconic public treasure that we welcome everyone to come on down. Coney Island is reopened. I invite my colleagues, your families, your friends to enjoy. And this effort today is to preserve the boardwalk for many, many more years to come without vehicles on it. So thank you so much for your support. And I, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member Traeger. Ulrich. Okay. Valone. Madam Majority, may I have permission to explain my vote, please? Permission granted. Thank you, my dear. Uh, you know, I had the privilege of sitting next to Costa in the, the last row of the council chambers for almost eight years. And uh, to Costa, who I know is, is listening in heart and it's a horrible day for him. Uh, there wasn't a state that he didn't bring up or talk about the love for his wife the battle, the heroic battle she made in fighting her disease, uh, how he and his son were coping and hoping for a miracle. Um, so I, I know we all are sending our love, prayers, condolences to him and his entire family. Uh, if there's any solace for you today, Costa, it's that today she's buried on the day you fought for so passionately your whole career on Earth Day. Uh, and, and she will forever be smiling down and looking over you and your son. As a father and a husband and, and a fellow council member, we are uh, here for you and whatever you need. For Christine Wilkinson's family, she served with all three balloons um, with, with passion and for each of us. She, she always made sure we were okay. And if you needed anything and if your event was okay and any last minute details, uh, she saw to that all. So um, a sad day for us, but a, a hopeful day that they are forever now guardians looking down upon us from the gates of heaven. Uh, and with that, I vote aye on all, and thank you to the speaker for co-sponsoring with me 1680A to finally address food insecurities in the city. Uh, God bless everyone, thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. First, I wanna congratulate all of the members of the council staff who courageously organized and fought for the recognition of the union that will represent them. I know that uh, many members of, of my staff were active in the effort uh, and I was uh, always supportive and am supportive. And uh, today is a very significant victory for uh, all of the current and future staff members of the council. Um, just 
the loss of Lori Constantinides is uh, uh, just unfathomable um, that an 11 year old boy has lost his mother uh, is um, just so, so tragic. Um, Costa uh, would always uh, not just talk about uh, Lori whenever I saw him, but, but ask about my mother um, and because they uh, lived close together, Lori grew up in, in uh, my portion of Astoria and uh, in my district. And, uh, uh, and of course, she'll be laid to rest tomorrow at St. Joe's, um, the, the church that I went to and that my mom uh, uh, goes to and lives on the block of. So just uh, horrifically sad and our love and support to all of them. It's just uh, so, so sad uh, for Nikki and Costa. Um, Christine McLaughlin, I knew for decades. She was so wonderful. She was so much fun. Uh, she was doing the work as she was planning all of our events. As she was doing our newsletters and she was just wonderful. She had this great spirit, this Irish American working class um, uh, manner. And, and I was so sad when Christine passed away. Uh, we always loved her. Um, she was always so helpful to all of us. Um, and she deserved uh, a longer retirement too. So just very, very sad, um, but loved Christine McLaughlin. I just wanted to say that. Uh, and with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jaeger. I vote aye on all with the exception of introduction 1959, on which I vote no, and introduction uh, 1748, on which I abstain. Uh, and Madam President, if I could just be excused for a moment, uh, just to offer my condolences to our brother Costa. Uh, I served under him uh, when I was on the Environmental Protection Committee, and uh, he is he, he's just an incredible human being. He was an incredible member of this council, and I was sad to see him leave us just a few days ago. Um, and we all know, those of us who spoke with him, uh, what he's been going through, uh, and he's been public about it. Um, but uh, he's, he's just an incredibly warm person. Uh, generous in his in his the way he's treated others here, and I know we're all feeling for him today. And uh, I just, for many reasons, wish it was a year and a half ago, and we can all be in the same room, and we can just run up to him and give him a big hug and get that beer hug back. Um, and I hope he's doing okay. Uh, thank you for the time, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, one last time, Councilmember Ulrich, I'll be signing off. Councilmember Ulrich, whenever you're ready. Thank you. I apologize. My phone died. I had to recharge it. Uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Matteo. And I vote no on 1608, 1748A, and 1959A, and I'm rest. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye on all, and I also share with my colleagues um, in sending our condolences to the family of Costa Costantinides. This is an unspeakable loss, particularly at this time as we are all dealing with COVID-19. And I hope that we can all continue to be there for him and his son um, during this difficult time. And I also remember when I first got elected as chair of the Women's Issues Committee, um, if anybody knows me, they know how much I love doing events. And Christine was such a great supporter of my huge and big ideas um, and managed to find compromises with me to see my visions come through. And so my condolences are with her um, and her entire family as we um, continue to mourn with everyone um, who has faced the loss in this body. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I have an eye on all, and I just want to remind colleagues uh, that the services are tonight starting at four o'clock for Costa's wife. And if any of you can be there, I know it would mean a lot to him. So if you need the information, you can reach out to me or uh, Karen, the chair of the Queen's delegation, and we can get you the information. But um, uh, please, if you can be there tonight, I mean, his family's in a lot of pain right now. Um, so it would be very, very meaningful. I vote aye on all. 
Okay. All items on today's general order calendar have a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of introduction 1959A has a vote of 46 in the affirmative, three in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 1748A has 45 in the affirmative, two in the negative, two abstentions. Resolution 1608 has 47 in the affirmative, two in the negative. Resolution 1603 has 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, one abstention. And land use items 733 and 734 with their accompanying resolutions have a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we now have today's general orders calendar have been adopted. So all items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. We will now move into the introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Carnegie, Barron, and Kalos. Okay, and just a reminder, this is just on resolutions at this time. So we will begin with council member Carnegie. I'm sorry, Madam Majority Leader, I have resolutions and a suite of bills that are kind of coupled together. Can I, I'm not gonna read through the bills in their entirety. It's just a general blanket statement that covers the bills and resolutions, is that okay? Mr. Parliamentarian, are we only allowing at this time for the current resolution that we are about to vote on, or are we oh. opening? Oh, it's the current resolution we're voting on. I'm, I apologize. Correct. Okay, general orders, I guess, then. Can I keep my hand raised for general orders? Yes, you may. I mean, for general discussion. Thank you. And I then apologize. We have, and Council Member Barron, at this time, do you wish to speak on resolution 1372? 1372, the George Floyd Act? Yes, ma'am. That's the one I want to speak on, yes. All right. You may begin. Thank you. Uh, just very briefly, uh, when we received the guilty verdict earlier this week, a lot of people were jubilant, glad, celebratory, and I certainly extend to the family and friends of George Floyd our condolences and yes, satisfaction at this verdict that was received. But I see this as an anomaly. I don't know that there's any great expectation that some other police violence, police misconduct that may occur and not have the broad display on social media as we receive with George Floyd will not get a similar verdict. I think that it calls for people who are upstanders, as we say, and see something and want to take action to, in fact, follow through and do that. Uh, I was very moved by the witness who said that she felt guilt that she didn't do anything to intervene. Perhaps that would have resulted in her death as well. But we certainly want to encourage people who are active in the streets and raising the voice and making this issue a priority to continue to do that. And yes, we have a verdict. But let's not forget Akai Gurley, who had a verdict, uh, Peter Liang, and that he served not one day in jail. So let's still be vigilant and let's see what happens at the sentencing. And I still say that we need to change. We need to have an elected civilian review board that has the authority to really meet out the appropriate responses to cases such as this. But once again, I support the legislation and encourage my colleagues to vote in the affirmative. Thank you so much, Councilmember Barron. Councilmember Kalos, do you wish to speak on the resolution at this time? Yield. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak on this particular resolution at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Councilmember Menchaca. Councilmember Menchaca, you may begin. 
Thank you, Majority Leader, and thank you for your resolution today. I'm standing in support proudly uh, as a council member here in Brooklyn representing Sunset Park and Red Hook. You know, I'm still also processing the verdict that came out this week. Emotions range from relief to joy to sadness and anger. George Floyd should be alive today. Breonna Taylor should be alive today. Eric Garner, Eric Kaya Gurley, all of them should be alive today. We shouldn't live in a world where officers kill innocent people. Now, we can live in a world like that if we can make that happen. Uh, and this is why I'm taking an opportunity right now to connect us to the budget conversations that we're in. We haven't had uh, another BNT meeting since that first one, a single one since the last um, budget vote. And so I'm encouraging us to really pressure each other to get back into that room to discuss these things. This resolution is important, um, but the leadership that we need to demonstrate is real uh, and is connected to this resolution in a very big way. Uh, thank you so much and peace. Thank you, Councilmember Menchaca. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak? No, Madam Majority Leader. At this time, prior to the vote, um, I would like to speak on this particular resolution. On Tuesday, the whole nation watched with bated breath as the jury deliberated over the murder of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer. I'm positive that many, if not all of us, breathed a collective sigh of relief when the judge read out the guilty verdict. Yet George Floyd still does not breathe. His life was cut short violently, publicly, and without any sympathy, care, or recognition of the fact that he was a father, a son, a brother, and a friend to so many people. Yesterday in remarks to the public, Vice President Kamala Harris said that because of smartphones, so many Americans have now seen the racial injustice that Black Americans have known for generations, the racial injustice that we have fought for for generations. By the time Vice President Harris and President Biden made their remarks, newspapers had confirmed that yet another Black girl, Makia Bryant, just 16 years old, had been shot and killed by the police, this time in Columbus, Ohio. The federal George Floyd Justice and Policing Act tackles law enforcement misconduct in various ways, including lowering the criminal intent standard from willful to knowing or reckless to convict a law enforcement officer. It also limits qualified immunity for police officers, something our city council legislated and passed last month. We are living in very precarious times. VP Harris urged passage of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, not as a panacea to every problem, but as a start. It is in that spirit that we as members of the city council in one of the greatest and biggest melting pots in the United States must join together and resoundly affirm that the federal government must pass this bill. This legislation will also transform law enforcement culture by prohibiting all racial and religious profiling, creating accreditation standards for police departments, banning chokeholds and no knock warrants, limiting military grade equipment transfers to state and local law enforcement and empowering communities to create new public safety approaches through grants for community-based organizations. This is really baseline. This is a simple resolution. This is an opportunity for us to put structures in place that should have been a part of our police departments all across this country all along. We have to make sure that we send a message loud and clear that the verdict in the George Floyd case is not a substitution for legislation. Legislation must still be put in place. As Council Member Barron so eloquently stated, this because of the worldwide presence and the worldwide fight that so many people put forward, the entire world is watching us. And that's why this verdict was handed down. But for so many other cases that do not have that worldwide global support, legislation is critical and it's needed now more than ever. And so I thank all of my colleagues for all of your support, particularly the Black, Latino and Asian Caucus. I wanna thank at this time as well, uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for recognizing 
the, the, the timeliness of this. Uh, I also want to thank Jason Goldman, uh, the chief of staff to the city council. And I also want to thank my staff, Jason Herr, as well as uh, my chief of staff, uh, Tasha Young, uh, Jasmine, uh, Jasmine Coelho, as well as Gigi Elliott Davis, and all of my staff for getting us to this particular point. So at this point, Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak on today's resolution 1372? No, Madam Majority Leader. I'll now read today's resolution into the record. Resolution 1372 calls upon the United States Congress to pass and the president to sign H.R. 1280, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act of 2021. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Take all the ayes. We'll now open it up for the nays. Any abstentions? The ayes have it and it's a proud day in the city council. We will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak at this time on general discussion? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Kalos, Lewis, and Carnegie. Council member Kalos, you may begin. Today is Earth Day. The council just passed legislation to ban pesticides in city parks and property, and we can and must go further. We've been working with Speaker Corey Johnson on using every penny of our $22 billion contracts budget towards saving our planet. We haven't updated our city's environmental procurement program since it was adopted in 2005, and with some materials from 2012 that refer to cassette tapes, mini discs, and answering machines. Introduction 2271 will update the EPP to adopt electronic standards so best in class known as EP, include furniture, ban halogen lamps, and more ambitious standards, including net zero greenhouse gas emissions, eliminating reliance on virgin materials, eliminating reliance on hazardous substances, improving outdoor air quality, reducing the negative effects, and generating positive effects for our environment from our purchases. Introduction 2272 would establish a task force to research and consider other social costs associated with production of textiles, including the nature of labor conditions along with the supply chain, along with reporting on whether the textiles are recycled or organic or whole and in part, the supply and source of textiles, the value of the contracts, the lengths of the use and disposals. Both bills will be heard tomorrow, Friday, April 23rd in the Contracts Committee. Would love to have you on board. Last but not least, Introduction 2273 We'll install over 1,000 solar powered waste receptacles throughout the city. Our streets are a mess. Sanitation is not doing enough to do pickups. These things can hold six times more trash, plus they're rat proof. Please uh, sign on to all three. I yield my time. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. We'll now move to Councilmember Lewis. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson and Majority Leader Combo, for the opportunity to share information on two critical pieces of legislation that I'm introducing today. Last month, this body voted for the mayor's police reform plan, and I introduced two bills that would enable us to take a meaningful step in executing the pledge and agreements made in those plans. Therefore, I'm introducing a supplemental bill today concerning the Civilian Complaint Review Board. Intro 2274, a local law will amend to amend the New York City Charter in relation to the creation of a database to facilitate the Civilian Complaint Review Board's access to police department records. For years, the NYPD has been negligent in providing the CCRB investigators with sufficient details and information they deem necessary to investigate civilian complaints against officers. Now is the time for us to expand the scope of the Civilian Complaint Review Board by removing barriers to the relevant information that would enable them to gauge the merit of civilian complaints against officers more accurately. Intro 2274 will help improve the CCRB's efficacy while increasing police accountability. I urge my colleagues to sign on to these bills, including intros 
2248 and 2249, which I introduced last month, collectively we can implement solutions to deliver on the promise of a fairer and more transparent system of checks and balances for our police department. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Lewis. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak? I see Council Member Cornegy. Are there any other members following behind him? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Gennaro and Yeager. Council Member Cornegy, you may begin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I'm Council Member Robert Cornegy, and I'd like to start off by sending condolences to my friend Costa Constantinides and the passing of his wife, Lori. She was an adored member of a community in Astoria and she'll be missed far and wide. She can never be replaced and I wanna send a special prayer to their son, Nico. Our business agenda today includes seven bills and one resolution that I'm introducing. In partnership with my colleagues to start, in, to start intro to 2260, we'll require the Department of Environmental Protection to test for air contaminants in underground subway stations and study the sources of air contaminants. On Earth Day, we must care for the air quality that impacts our residents and particularly <clears throat> our subway employees. Working with the Department of Buildings, we're proposing several construction safety bills and code changes. I do not accept that construction deaths are inevitable, and I do not accept that elevator mishaps should lead to death. We must strive for safety through thoughtful legislation, incorporating input from a wide range of stakeholders. The sweeping legislation and code revisions puts us on the path to a healthier, more sustainable city. It also makes sensible improvements to increase affordability. I'm particularly pleased to confront the reality of climate change by better preparing our city for flooding and supporting sustainable building materials. Bravo to everyone who worked so hard to bring these proposals forward. We'll also discuss another transformative proposal, public banking. Establishing a city-owned bank that would hold city deposits would create a civic-minded financial institution centered on the people of our city and our economic development. A city public bank would be able to take our values into account as it operated to assist small businesses, worker cooperatives, immigrant communities, student borrowers, and neighborhoods who have been underserved by traditional financial institutions. A public bank presents the city with a fresh opportunity to advance socially conscious goals through a time-tested avenue. Indeed, we have over 100 years of proof of concept of public banking with the bank in North, Car in North Dakota. This bank has weathered numerous downturns and crises. Um, we can repeat. We can repeat that in New York with the passage of Resolution 1600. I want to thank my colleagues for all the thoughtful legislation considered by the City Council today. I'm proud of our work to re reinvigorate New York City in ways large and small. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Cornegy. We will now go to Councilmember Gennaro. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I wanted to wait until this time. Uh, of the meeting to, um, you know, to, to, to pay tribute to, to Costa. He, uh, many people may not know that he worked as my legislative director for six years. Uh, I've known him for 13 years. I've known Lori and Costa since before Nico was born. Um, we're family, we talk all the time. Um, and um, he's been there for me and, and, and um, and I, I just want to thank everyone for their heartfelt expressions of, of, of love for Costa and his family, uh, the, the speaker, everything he had to say, uh, Councilman Vallone and everyone who knew him so well, Barry and everyone who spoke so eloquently uh, uh, about Costa. And um, I just, you know, I don't want to belabor it. I know people want to get through the meeting and want to get to the wake, but I, 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 I felt a special need to put some of my thoughts and feelings on the record regarding my dear friend. And I thank everyone in this body for your love of Costa and all of, and, and the, you know, regard with which you hold him and always have held him. And he always spoke, spoke very highly of this council and how, um, you know, they really showed him a lot of love and I thank everybody. For that. And um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your kind words. Councilmember Yeager. Councilmember Yeager, you go. You got, got it. it. Okay, it's the buttons. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President. Today I am introducing uh, introduction 2287, 
uh, together with 10 of our colleagues, a very broad coalition of legislators in our body. Um, as we all know, enforcement of COVID-related executive orders over the last 13 months or so uh, was at many times arbitrary and discriminatory. Many neighborhoods in our city, and particularly uh, predominantly Black, Latino, and Orthodox Jewish neighborhoods, were targeted for enforcement in ways that wealthy, predominantly white neighborhoods were not. Uh, this is a fact. It's been publicly reported. Uh, it's not just anecdotal. We saw it over the last year. Uh, this is still going on today, although granted not as bad as it was last year, uh, but nonetheless, it has to stop. Our bill will require the dismissal of summonses issued for violations of these COVID-related executive orders. Uh, as we emerge from the pandemic and we begin to restore to some normalcy, uh, I think it's also important to restore New Yorkers' ability to move forward without backbreaking fines hanging over their heads. I'm very proud of the broad coalition of 11 members of our body from different races, from different backgrounds, from all walks of life, from all places on the political spectrum who have come together uh, to join us to introduce this legislation. It's a large coalition. I really would urge all of my colleagues to join us and get this done. Uh, please, you can join us by easily signing on to introduction 2287 to at least bring us some minor relief and closure to a very painful year in our city's history. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you so much, Councilmember Yeager. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. I will now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you to all my colleagues. The stated meeting of April 22nd, 2021 is hereby adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.